Live. Um, thank you uh, so much for tuning in for today's live with uh, Nikio. I'm so excited to get to do this uh, this live uh, with her. She's just such an expert in beauty and all things. Uh, and thank you so much for. Um, taking the time to spend this month with me um, talking about skin cancer awareness and uh, prevention and uh, following me on your journey um, in my journey with the sun. So um, thank you guys for being here. Um, I am going to attempt uh, to find Nikio here. And if you're there, join me. Sometimes it takes me a hot minute, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, um, to actually do this. So let's see. I'm so oh, here she is. I think I've. I think I said view request. I think we did it. Oh gosh. Hi. Hey. Oh, you're here. <laughs> Hi, sweet friend. How are you? Hi, how are you? Oh, you know, it's so good to see your face. I, so good to see yours. I feel like I'm I'm a little flushed right now. I get a little I get a little uh, hot under the, under the arms trying to do an Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> right. I never know got, for sure. Like delay. Like, are they gonna get in? Are we gonna stay alive? Did I make my phone go on do not disturb? All the things. All the things, all the things. Thank you so much, Nikio, for um, making the time to do this today. I'm so excited. You know, I'm such a, a fan of yours and admirer. I respect you so much as a friend and as an entrepreneur and as someone that really knows beauty uh, in this space. And you and I have talked at length about uh, sun care yeah. and sun damage uh, skin cancer and all of the things. And so I just wanted to um, really pick your brain a little bit, allow my followers to learn about you and to amplify what you're doing, which is some very, very exciting stuff, and to answer uh, some questions, of course, regarding all of the things. So, um, absolutely. First, I wanted to um, I wanted to tell everybody, I guess, some of the amazing things that you're doing right now, specifically with share with my followers all the amazing things that you're doing in regards to that um, incredible e-commerce site. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm so excited to share. And hi, everyone. I'm Nikao. And yes, I'm just, I'm so glad to be here. Um, yeah, I just recently, well, I'm the founder of a skincare brand called Nikao that I've had for many years that sells here in the States at Target. Um, but I also just recently in December, launched um, a truly inclusive beauty retail platform called 13 Loon, um, which has been so exciting and, you know, was really born out of the summer of 2020 when not only were we dealing with a global pandemic of COVID-19, we were also really dealing with probably the biggest pinnacle moment of the Black Lives Matter movement in our lifetime here um, and around the world. Everyone was feeling it. And so, you know, during that time, I kept finding myself and my skincare brand, Nikeo, showing up on all the lists of, you know, top 20 black founders to follow or shop. And, and while it was lovely to have, you know, this kind of boost in sales, it was really built on the precipice of this really heartbreaking time. And so I decided to kind of take that pain and turn it into purpose. And, you know, I know as a black female founder that I make products for people of all skin types, just like products that I buy by people who are not black or brown, make them products for me. And, and that there are so many people that do that and that are, you know, founders really trying to build generational wealth in black and brown communities that have incredible products. So we decided to start 13 Loon and implement what we call our own 90-10 rule, which is 90% of the products sold on 13 created by BIPOC founders, so Black, Indigenous, people of color, founders who create products for people of all colors. And 10% of our brands are dedicated to fostering allyship because the only way we're going to get to a 
place of peace and unity is by coming together. And, you know, the beauty industry has a responsibility and an opportunity to help unify us in a greater way. And so, so that's who we are and what we do. And we launched with 13 black owned brands. We now have 52 BIPOC wow. owned brands and a couple of ally brands. We launched Goop, we launched Dr. Barbara Sturm. So, you know, we have true allyship happening um, in our virtual shelves, but really it's more in community and conversation and, and getting to discover, you know, all of these amazing founders. So it's a lot of well, fun. I tip my hat to you because, um, you know, we were, I think, talking about this very close to your launch or just after your launch. And, and I just thought, you know, yeah. it was, it was just inspired. It was incredibly timely and so very, very important. And, um, you know, we are creating products that, that should be universally enjoyed and, uh, yeah. and bought by everyone. Right. So, um, congratulations. Absolutely. I, Thank you. Love Thank, you. Um, Thank you. And so I much. just want to speak of your product initially. You ha you create this incredible oil. Uh, it smells so divine. You know I'm obsessed with it. Um, but it's it's by Nikeo Beauty and it's found at Target. I want to mention that again because that that was one of the very first products. Um, that's how I became introduced to you. Really, yeah. it's like I started the product. I loved it, and then I met you. So um, um, and that's how our relationship um, evolved. So I just wanted to, yeah. you can find it on the show. Uh, and then you can see more of her stuff that's gonna be coming out at 13. Um, yeah, so thank absolutely. you. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about um, sort of, you know, we've talked about skincare and, and sun care and skin cancer prevention, but I really kind of want to defer to you in terms of what are the things that we can do in terms of beauty and anti-aging and all of the things that, you know, aside from the skin cancer, which is the most paramount thing that we should all be concerned with, you right. know, um, right. what are, what are the things to, you know, in terms of maybe melasma or pigmentation, um, right. signs of premature, what are some of the, the basic you know, I'm wondering maybe if we should start with with a question, actually, I should backtrack. Um, because this is my sort of question all of the time with SPF. Yeah. I know we should be wearing it. Everybody knows we should be wearing it. Yeah. Um, kind of what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Do I put on my SPF first when I get out of the shower and then apply sort of maybe my moisturizer or my serum or then, you know, or do I apply that stuff first and then put my SPF, my, my sunscreen on last before I do my makeup. Um, can you tell me yeah. um, how do we properly yes. layer? That's a great question. Our skin? Yes. So, so, yeah, so I sort of subscribe um, and what works for me and, and works for, you know, many people that I consult in their skin is to go from thinnest to thickest, right? So I'll tell you, so yeah. for myself, you know, I always double cleanse. So I'll cleanse with okay. like a cleansing balm and kind of melt off the impurities. If it's at night, I'm melting off makeup and sunscreen, but I use a cleansing balm first. And then I always follow up with like a, a gentle cleansing serum. I use my esthetician, Jordan's cleansing serum. So I use that next. And then, <laughs> um, and then I always follow up with a face oil. Oh, actually before my face oil, I use a vitamin C serum. So I'll use that, and that really helps um, for many reasons. It helps to fight hyperpigmentation. It really helps to give you that kind of glue and bo bo glow and boost, but it also really helps your sunscreen to work better. So I do vitamin I C did serum. Oh. Yeah. I was like, wait, hold on, my alone, because I'm like, anything to get our sunscreen to work better. Yeah, um, so yeah, I vitamin C serum works to help boost your SPF. Right. So we should be wearing, yeah. if we can, fit it into, if we can afford it, Yeah. invest in a great vitamin C serum, put a that on first. Serum. Yeah. So you'll put that on after then, cleansing. Then I use a face oil. So I'll use my Nikeo like rescue oil. And then I use my moisturizer that has SPF 40 in it. 
Um, so okay. I always believe that SPF needs to be the thing that you seal in. You know, if your SPF is super hydrating, then I would do your moisturizer, then your SPF. I just okay. think it needs to be the last thing that goes on your skin it's going to really help to build that barrier and protect you from the sun protect you from blue light and really kind of help your products to work better but the vitamin c is okay. a really good way to to increase um it's the power of your spf wow that's so that's so great so that really really that i love that by the way and we're going to talk about vitamin c serum so you can tell me which one to get um yes definitely but, you mentioned SPF 40, which brings me to sort of my next question is mm -hmm. what is a sufficient SPF? Um, and we're talking just specific to our faces right now, not necessarily our bodies, but do you think, right. you know, there's different varying degrees of SPF. So is an SPF 30 good or what's, you know, SPF 40, I see SPF 50. Um, what do you think is the most sufficient um, for our faces on a, on a daily basis? Right. So, you know, my dermatologist has always told me anything SPF 30 or greater. So, you yeah. know, if I see something that's 30 plus, I think just psychologically, I think, okay, 30 plus means it's more than 30. So it's definitely hitting the mark. It's really just yeah. my own personal thing that I love reaching for a 40 or a 50, just so I can have that assurance that I'm getting that coverage. I'm not one of those people, unless I'm outside all day long, that remembers to keep reapplying, like I get busy in my day. So I feel like, and this is just personal to me, that the, the higher, you know, and, and I don't think it needs to go higher than 40 or 50. When you start to see the hundreds and the hundreds and tens, like that to me feels <laughs> like a little bit more of Bye. a marketing play. Um, but yeah, I mean, 30 plus is what I've been told by several dermatologists and skincare experts and so I always say 30, 30 plus is, is great, but I personally wear a 40. And if I'm out in the sun all day at the beach for my body, I'll use a 40 or a 50 because I know I'll be in and out of water and, you know, want to just make sure that I'm, that I'm staying covered. Yes. Um, okay. That's very good advice. Do you, do you, well, you and I have talked about sunscreens a lot in terms of you know, what, what is the most ideal sunscreen for one's health, for one's skin sensitivity? And I think that you and I are both in agreement that a non-chemical sunscreen, one whose active ingredients are uh, titanium dioxide, a combination of titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, is sort of um, everyone's best bet right? Um, right. in terms of safety. And also for those, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, please, but I also, I'm someone who tends to break out from a lot of different sunscreens. Me too. So I find the ones that are, yes, it's a real common pet peeve from a lot of people, right. which, which, you know, deters people from wanting to use sunscreen because who wants to have right. bad skin as well, you know? Right. So right. it's a real catch. It really is, you know, for those of you who are out there that don't want to use sunscreen because you're afraid of a breakout, um, really try to, you know, lean in the direction of a, of a chemical-free sunscreen because those will help not um, clog your pores. So Absolutely. Um, those are great. Um, yeah. However, you also talked about, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, in the BIPOC community, populations of color, veer away from those mm -hmm. specific big sunscreens, the chemical free um, sunscreens, um, because aesthetically speaking, they're not necessarily inclusive of all skin tones. Right. So yeah. it's true. So yes. Yeah. So for a lot of people, you know, that are just even, you know, darker melanin rich skin, um, a lot of the non chemical based sunscreens tend to go a little chalky on the skin or have maybe a purplish tint to the skin and none of us want to change um, the color of our skin by, by protecting it from the sun. What I will say is that, you know, the industry has come a really long way and there are some great sun care brands created by founders of color that really took that, you know, that are not, that are not physical, um, sunscreens or chemical sunscreens, um, that, you know, really took that sort of grayness and ashiness and purpleness and all of that into consideration in their formulations 
but as well as, you know, some great companies that have, you know, what they like to call like their unseen sunscreens and things like that, that have no color or tint to them um, mm -hmm. that you're able to then wear and it doesn't take away from your own um, natural skin coloring. So, you know, the industry is coming a long way. A lot of people are really starting to, which I love, is like really look at, at sun care as skin care and not just an added thing. So building in sun care into great formulations with awesome skincare benefits um, so mm. that that can be your moisturizer. Like I'm very much like, I like everything that's just kind of like in one step with a moisturizer. So I want to be able to get the skincare benefits and have all of those great ingredients that help to fight the signs of aging. But also the most important way to fight the signs of aging is covering your skin from the sun. And it's yes. the best anti-aging treatment you can give yourself is wearing sunscreen. And so yeah. I, I, I love think you're making, having, mm -hmm. I think you're I mean, making the best point. People ask me all the time, like, how do I avoid more fine lines and wrinkles? I'm like, do you wear sunscreen? Cause that's the number one way. Like, <laughs> There's no oil, exactly. there's no serum, nothing that's going to protect you <laughs> from, you know, the fine lines and, and premature aging than, than protection from the sun. There, that's, that's it. You heard it, folks. Yes. That's exactly it. And we know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and we know. And it's so important to kind of start that awareness at a young age. So if you've got, you know, young children out there, I know for me, um, having, you know, had a history of melanoma and, and skin yeah. cancer, I'm my, my kids, I'm constantly, did you put your sunscreen on? Did you, did you put your sunscreen on? And I think it's um, as important, you know, as brushing teeth. So yeah. the, the earlier that we can instill our kids, um, you know, to adopt a healthy um, skincare, sun care uh, routine, the better. Uh, okay, cool. I want to ask a few, I got a couple of great questions from some fans that wrote in. So, um, oh, I want to ask you, um, do you think, now this is a good question because there's a lot of tinted moisturizers out there mm -hmm. and a fan, Alexandra asked, uh, do you think tinted moisturizer with SPF is enough? Mm. Well, I think that's a really great question, Alexandra. Um, so first of all, it depends on how much SPF is in your tinted moisturizer um, and mm. how well does that tinted moisturizer stay on your face? Because uh, oftentimes, you know, obviously we spoke about earlier that I think it's SPF 30 or above. So if it's less than S SPF 30, then I would say, no, it's not enough. And also what's the consistency of your moisturizer? And, and you know, that's all gonna be dependent on what sort of are you in, you know, if, if it's a really hot day and you put on a tinted moisturizer that's more sort of oil-based, even if it has SPF 30, if you go out and you sweat and it has the tendency or they don't make the claims that it's sweat proof for a certain amount of hours, I would still mm -hmm. continue to add on another um, sunblock or to add one on if you do, you know, sweat, you know, to add it on throughout the day if you're going to be outside or driving in your car. I also always suggest that you wear sunscreen on your hands. That's another place that Good. people forget that we show age, especially, you know, we live in Southern California, so we're always outside driving. Um, you always have to put, you know, whatever you have left over extra, just make sure you're putting some on your hands. But yeah, I mean, that's such a great question. I love tinted moisturizers that have SPF in them already, just make sure that it's it's over 30 and that the consistency of the formula, like at the end of the day, when you go to wash your face, if you take a wipe or a washcloth and you get a lot of product off and it stayed all day, then it's probably fine. But if you go and you realize that it's faded throughout the day, then it's probably not enough and I would still continue to add a clear sunscreen over it. Okay, that's that's um that's actually a great way of looking at it. At the end of the day, if you're not seeing it, uh, mm -hmm. then it's gone. And then you know another important thing out there, folks, and I love that you mentioned that about the hands, um, is we have to reapply every two hours, right? That's right. so so important. Or you know, most um, sunscreens are only good when you you know while you're in the water, and then when you come out of the water, you need to reapply once again right right um right for your body throughout the day so 
Um, that's super, super important. And yeah, I always, I, I, I too even know this and I always forget to, you know, I'm always on my face and my, my neck and my ears. And then I kind of always forget about my hands. So yeah. uh, it's, it's, uh, I should just have it in like the little cup holder in my car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or sometimes I'll start with my hands for that very reason. You know, like I'll just, oh. as I'm going to apply it, I start with my hands and then I put it on my face. So I make sure not to forget my hands. And to you your know, point, all... your chest, your neck, like it's not just your face. I always tell people like anti-aging is head to toe. It's not just from yeah. the neck up or from the chin up. You have to make sure that you're getting your sunscreen on your neck, on your chest, on your face. And this is not just for people who are fair skinned. You know, I think that there's still a lot of work to be done around people who are olive complected, are, are melanin rich, people of color. Um, that we all need sunscreen. You know, the melanoma numbers are rising in black and brown communities more than ever before. And, you know, the sun, for just all intents and purposes, is just getting stronger and stronger. Like, no matter what you believe about global warming, like, wherever you live, especially if you live in warmer communities, like, our summers are hotter, our falls are hotter, yeah. you know, and, and it's not, you know, for me, I always say that sunscreen is not a seasonal uh, item. It's an everyday an everyday commitment, just like brushing your teeth. So that's exactly, that's exactly right. You said something um, uh, to me a few weeks ago. You said, you know, sun care is 365 days a year. Yeah. Th 365 days a year. And you're absolutely right. And, and it does affect everyone. And I'm, and I'm glad you mentioned um, the rise in uh, specific skin cancers, in, in people of color in the BIPOC um, community. Um, for those of you who are watching now, um, I hope next week you'll tune, you'll tune in. I'm going to be doing an Instagram live with world-renowned dermatologist, Dr. Um, Andrew Alexis. And Amazing. we're going to specifically about um, the misconceptions of, uh, of, of care or sun, uh, uh, skin cancer awareness in mm -hmm. the BIPOC community and in specific skin cancers. And we're gonna debunk some myths out there together. So I hope That's you tune in that. Really, really, really important um, information um, that all people need to, to hear and know and understand. So thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that, Absolutely, Nikhil. absolutely. Um, I would like to ask you, hold on, I got a couple of other questions here. Um, what, okay, so, I want to not start asking you kind of like what your favorite uh, sunscreen products are. Um, Febriana asks, what is your favorite sunscreen? Mm. I mean, it's a tough one. I have lots that I love um, and kind of take it in and out of rotation. So um, I definitely wear natural, you know, non-chemical sunscreens. Um, currently, the one that I'm obsessed with is one that we sell at 13 Loon called Unsun. Um, which she makes a tinted and a non-tinted. Um, it is so good. And it's yeah. one of those sunscreens that, like when I talked about earlier, that you feel skincare benefits within the sunscreen. Like, mm -hmm. it's super hydrating and moisturizing. I have very, very, very dry skin. And a lot of sunscreens tend to be a little drying. So I love Unsun. Um, I also love a brand called Kula, C-O-O-L-A. They're a mineral sunscreen. Um, oh, I've seen, okay. I've not used that brand, but I've heard of it. Okay. It's really right, great. Cool. And they have one that doesn't like go chalky on my skin. It, I, you, when I put it on, because I don't wear makeup every day. So, you know, I don't want to have to wear sunscreen that I then have to cover up with makeup because it's, you know, changed the color of my face. So... Um, it's really, really good. Kula is great, but Unsun, which we carry at 13 Loon, is incredible. And then, it, as I said, it comes in tinted and untinted. And the tinted is great because it just kind of gives you this, like, even coverage. It comes in, in light, medium, and medium dark. And um, both shades work on all skin types, all colors. And um, it's really, really good product and, and made with great ingredients. And I'm so sensitive, and it doesn't make me break out. She's amazing. She made it with love too. She so, did. She uh, did. Yeah, she's incredible. Uh, how do you feel about uh, setting sprays? Because you know, in the spirit of you know, really trying to promote people um, reapplying every two hours. Yeah. Um, 
I see that that's kind of a new trend. Uh, uh, do you do you guys have any of those on your site, or you know, how do you feel about those? Do those work? Um, and yeah. you know, I'm curious. If people are really using them a lot. Right. Yeah. So I've only ever I've used one by Supergoo before, but mm -hmm. you know, for me personally, I mean, people love them, and I have friends that you know all summer they're just like shh, shh, shh. so they you know they do their application in the morning and then they use that to kind of reset throughout the day. I think they can be really cooling and hydrating too, which is great. I'm just one of those people that like wants to make sure that I get like every part of my skin. And sometimes like if I'm just spraying, I'm like, did I miss my cheek? Did I get my mm -hmm. little big forehead? Is it going like, to be blotchy? Did I, yeah, is it blotchy? So, I mean, I, I love spritzes and I love to spray and I like to keep sprays in the fridge and cool down in the summertime at the beach. But I don't necessarily always look to that for my sun care per se. I, I will use one that has it, but I'll still apply, you know, I'm just old school that way. I just like to be able to feel and know exactly where it's going. And then do you touch up your makeup after that? Like, cause I'm always, you know, I don't wear a lot of makeup, but I definitely like, I, I, I wear, I wear concealer to cover up blemishes or to even right. out my skin tone. Yeah. Blush. So, you know, even though I know I'm protecting myself and I've got to do it, I right. mean, do really, you know, then do you, then do you reapply makeup? Right. Yeah, you know, sometimes I'll powder and, and I know now there's a lot of sunscreen companies that are doing powders that have SPF in them. Um, I what I will do. Well, so here's a really good trick. And I mean, it's not rocket science. It's that when I apply concealer, because I usually only really wear like concealer, um, like under my eyes and here and here, like where I need to conceal. Um, if I have hyperpigmentation showing like I'll conceal over that. And then I'll you know, but before that, I always, always set my concealer with like an eye serum or a great eye cream. So that way, when I then go to apply everything else, it doesn't slip off my face because it's it's got that like, it's almost like a primer. So when you put like eye cream or eye serum on, let it dry, then put your concealer on. Even when I'm reapplying and reapplying, it's almost like the concealer is set. So it's not going to crease. It's not going to fall off my face. I didn't. <laughs> your, skin needs to be, your skin needs to be super duper hydrated before you do anything. Okay. Because hydrated, okay. it won't. Your makeup won't fall off your face. You have to okay. make sure you're using your vitamin C. Make sure you're using your face oil, your moisturizer. Get it completely hydrated. Apply right. your concealer. I usually just wear concealer, mascara, a little bit of blush, and like lip gloss. It's like two minute makeup job. But I notice when I like skip some hydration steps, and then when I'm trying to reapply sunscreen, it is. It's like creasing and falling off my face. Yeah. It's because my face wasn't hydrated enough when I started the process. By the way, that is rocket science. <laughs> I didn't know that. I'm sure, nobody knew that. So thank you. That's like, you seriously got for all your hacks, all your tricks, all the oh time. Oh my gosh. Well, here's another good one. When you're applying your eye cream yeah. or eye serum, like I love from yeah. our friend and my esthetician, Shawnee Jarden, has an incredible, best eye the best eye serum. Uh, and I'm like a picky eye cream, eye serum person. But when you apply it, always use your fourth finger. Like here in the States, we like to say our ring finger, right? And when you apply it, you never pull the cream. Right. You just dot it and i always even take it up like around the lid and just make sure that all of that this is the thinnest skin on our face here here and our hands are where we show age the most and so if i have extra eye cream i'll even put it here around these like kind of lines around my mouth and oh. then i do the rest of the process and so then the make it's like the makeup has a canvas to to sit on it's like priming a painting Got it. Okay. This is all so good. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to ask you a few more questions. I don't want to take up too much of your time, oh, yeah, of but you're giving, like teaching so much here. I love it. Um, oh, this is an important one, I think, because a lot of, a lot of people are using retinols nowadays and, you know, that, you know, retinols, as we know, and maybe you can give a brief description of them, but as I understand it, they really help with regeneration of, of, of skin mm -hmm. and really help reverse the signs of maybe a lot of sun damage that we've right. um, accrued for over a period of time. Absolutely. Um, that's like another kind of catch 22. If you 
using retinols and you're sort of regenerating new skin, then it's kind of like baby skin, right? Mm -hmm. So really important for those folks out there that are using retinols to make sure that they're also really, really staying um, protected. Right. sunscreen right we all need sunscreen 365 days a year um every single one of us but if you are using a <laughs> retinol you almost need it like more than 365 days a year retinol is right. amazing it's one of the greatest products um to help reverse the signs of aging to help regenerate new skin cells to to get, there's so many benefits um but it, it can be extremely drying um, to the skin as well. So you have to make sure um, that you are using sunscreen when you use retinol or you can really burn your face. Um, so it's, it's really, really, really important, but, but such a great, such a great product and, and ingredient. Um, okay, that's fantastic. I'm just looking over my notes here. Is there anything that I'm missing that you and I should talk about? I really, first of well, all, I want to let- Well, somebody just, oh, sorry. Somebody just asked about hyperpigmentation and what do I use for hyperpigmentation? I actually use uh, vitamin C serum. I mean, it's like the miracle ingredient for every Helps your sunscreen, um, is incredible. Um, over at 13 Loon, we sell a few vitamin C serums. Um, the one that I'm using every day right now is by Beauty Stat. Um, it is so good. This is patented technology. Um, this is great for all of the things, helping to reduce fine lines and wrinkles, add hydration, make your sunscreen work better. Um, so this one's by Beauty Stat, a chemist named Ron Robinson, but we have hyper skin and butter and a couple of other brands. Is that a morning, is that a morning and an evening um, part of your routine or only in the morning? I, some people use it both, but I use it only in the morning. So I'll use this after cleansing. Um, if I exfoliate a couple times a week, this will be the first thing that happens after cleansing, before face oil, before moisturizer, before sunscreen. Okay, got you. And, and if you are using a retinol, do you use a retinol every day or do you use that a couple of times a week? Yeah, what's so your, I, what's use, um, I use retinols at night because I have super duper dry sensitive skin. And so I don't want to risk getting any sun when I have retinol on my face. Um, and so, because I have a tendency to burn very easily. So I use retinol at night and I use a, a lighter retinol. I use Texture Reform um, by Shawnee Jordan. Um, there, she has a traditional retinol. That's what she's famous for. And then she made one for people like me who have a little bit more sensitive skin. So I use that about two to three times a week only at night. Okay, good. So the, the, the retinols will sometimes kind of replace your vitamin C step. Yeah, um, yeah, at and, night. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. That's fantastic. And um, melasma. Let's mm -hmm. talk about melasma because that afflicts so many it's women. It's so all crazy. Women. I don't understand it. It comes, it goes. I, it's hormones. I oh. never had melasma until after I had children. And I remember looking in the mirror one day and like, I had already had a skincare line by the time I had children. I knew what melasma was. I talked to people about melasma and how to treat it, but I'd never seen it on my own face. And, and it was just one of those things. I think it's, it's hormonal when it's really hot or if I get really hot, it, it erupts. It's almost like an inflammation that comes out of nowhere. Um, and it can be yes. a real pain to deal with. Um, but once again, you know, vitamin C serum and SPF, <laughs> And face oil. Like if, if you only had three things in your regimen that you decided were, you know, non-negotiables in the morning, it would be vitamin C serum, uh, face oil and SPF. And at night it would be a couple times a week, a retinol, some face oil or some sort of overnight mask um, just to, you know, the key to younger looking skin is protection from the sun and hydration. And, you know, all of those things work together to, to, to give you the look that you want to achieve and give you your best, your best glow forward. That's right. Oh, I love that. Okay. On that note, <laughs> thank you for putting a glow in, uh, in my step today and everybody Aww. else's, you know, yeah, you're, I'm just so proud to call you a friend and, uh, thank you so much for answering all the questions all Ew. the time. Just keep up with your oh amazing gosh, work. Of You're course, of course. And thank you for thank you. And thank you for having me. I'm interviewing for skin cancer.
Cancer Awareness Month. It's so important. It affects each and every one of us. And so everybody run out there and yes. get your mineral sunscreen. Check out Unsun if you have dark skin and you don't want your skin to change colors. And thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. And all the things that we talked about, you guys, you can find them at 13 Moon. Go and check them out. The site is amazing. Um, and you won't, you won't be won't be sad that your skin will love it. So uh -huh. thank you so much. Uh -huh. Have a beautiful evening. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Talk soon. Bye, Bye. everyone.